This week, we create a cake based on the TV show, The Good Place. We are starting out with a seven inch cake covered in yellow. Check the description box for tutorials on ganashing and covering your cakes. The board has also been covered in Renshaw's Atlantic Blue. I've cut a small piece of greaseproof paper to the height of the cake, which I will use as a template to create the wording on the front, just to make sure I don't make it too big. Now, if you don't want to do it freehand, check out my Spitfire cake tutorial, which shows this step using a template, but I'm just going to make the letters up here. I'm using Renshaw's Atlantic Blue, rolling it into sausages and shaping the letters to fit onto the paper. Let these firm up a bit so they don't move when handling. Apply them to the front of the cake with water. I find starting with a centre letter helps for placing it in the middle. With greaseproof paper again, I've cut smaller strips and traced the words happy birthday, again working to the constraints of the paper size to make sure that they'll fit. Trace these onto the cake with either a pencil or a Dresden tool so it leaves a mark. To paint, I'm using Sugar Flare Sky Blue, which is quite a good match already, but to make the paint opaque, I'm mixing it with some Snowdrift White Powder by Rainbow Dust and some water. Just follow the impressions with a fine paintbrush. If you were a fan of The Good Place, I'm sure you'll get the reference. Another big part of the show is frozen yoghurt. I'm using a real paper tub as it saves on time. Ideally, you'll want a plain white one, but I already have these red and white striped ones, just because I'm a sucker for a retro cinema. If you wanted, you could make one out of gum paste, but allow for drying time and be careful of its contents, which I'll get into a bit later. Roll out some white paste so it's big enough to wrap around the cup. Brush the cup with piping gel. It won't be as damaging as water to the paper. Wrap the paste around the cup, cutting off the excess with a scalpel. The inside doesn't have to look pretty as it will be covered. Turn it upside down and trim the bottom flat. My cup has a lip so it doesn't sit completely flat on its base. To make this easier and more secure on the cake, add a ball of damp paste and squash the cup down onto it, swirling it to push it flat. Next is quite a long process, which you could speed up if you had an edible printer. I'm painting on the word yoghurt in blue, hot pink and purple on a slight angle which repeats from top to bottom. However, the next line requires a different spelling of yoghurt, one with an E at the end, and then another with a H in it. Repeat this all around, and if there is a gap, try to leave it to the left where a figure will sit. I'm placing a lump of white paste inside the cup as I will be inserting an edge on a wire, and it will need to be secure. It's then followed by your sweets of choice. These are Skittles. You can, of course, use chocolates, sweets, marshmallows or even bake a cupcake into it obviously before you've covered it in paste anything you like that works for you and your client for the age i'm mounting this onto a wire i've traced out the number 18 making sure that the one and the eight touch cut this out using a scalpel making sure to keep the numbers intact with each other roll out some paste with tylo added and keep it thick enough to insert a wire. Dampen the end of the wire and gently feed it into the paste. I can feel where the wire is going using my thumb. Apply some veg fat, which is Trex in the UK or Crisco in the US, to the back of your number. The best place for my wire is in the number one, so I'm sticking it to the paste exactly where the wire is. I'm using Trex for this because I want the number one to stay where the wire is and it helps it keep it in place. Follow around the edges of the numbers with your scalpel until it's fully cut out. Gently peel off your template and tap any rough edges to clean them off. Place it on a foam pad to fully set. 
For the model, I'm rolling out a blue sausage and folding it in half to make some pants. Trim the bottoms flat. Bend one leg over the other where the knee would be. The body starts as an oval, slightly nipped in at the waist. Trim the top and the bottoms flat. At the larger end, cut out a V-shape from the neckline and score down the centre with the Dresden tool for the join of the jacket. Then add two small balls of paste for buttons and mark in a top pocket. For shoes, take some chocolate brown paste and roll a small sausage that is fatter at one end than the other. Chop this down the middle to create two shoes. Place the flat end onto some rolled out black paste and trim around it with a scalpel. This creates the sole of the shoe that you can then indent with a heel and more texture. Stick the pants in place on the top of the cake and also the shoes. Then add the torso and secure it by pushing a kebab stick down the centre and leaving enough sticking up for the head. Leave this to firm up a bit before continuing with the next step. Once the torso is firm enough, add a cone of white paste down into the V and push it in with the Dresden tool, chopping off any excess that sticks above the jacket. Wrap a piece of flesh paste around the kebab stick and trim it down shorter. The collar is a strip of paste that's fatter in the middle and tapers off to pointed ends. Wrap this around the top of the neck and lead it down overlapping the V on the jacket. Hands start as ovals of flesh, slightly flattened and a triangle cut out to create a thumb. Round off the cut edge and flatten the end of the fingers. Cut three slits in the end to create four fingers. Gently separate the fingers and roll each one gently to round them out and lengthen them. Finally, place a finger beneath the thumb and roll to create a wrist. With water, stick the hand to the side of the tub. Try to avoid laying it right on the top as we still yet to put in the frozen yoghurt. This is a sausage of paste which you can bend by marking with the Dresden tool and pinching in an elbow. Join it to the hand and shoulder with water. Same thing goes for the other arm. The head is a little hard to explain as I do faff around a lot, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Start with an oval and press in some soft eye sockets and push up for the bottom of the nose. Continue to define the nose with the Dresden tool. Deepen the sockets for the bridge of the nose. With the sharp end, mark in a smile and then open it up with the soft end. Place in a white, small pointy sausage and squash it flat into the hole. Define the smile and press in to create a lower lip. The shape of the soft end of the Dresden tool creates happy eye sockets. Mark in some nostrils if you wish and fill the sockets with more white paste. Flatten small balls of black for pupils and then roll tiny white ones for catch lights. Small pieces of white paste pressed with the Dresden tool create eyebrows and then define the tops of the eyes with a very thin line of black paint.
Looking back at the photo, I decided to add some crease lines to the mouth area. Water down some pink paint for the lips. Gently shimmy this down the kebab stick and onto the neck. Using some thin black wire and a round tool, create glasses by looping it around in one rotation. Flatten it on the Dresden tool to make it slightly more oval. Hold it up to the eye to see where the next loop will go and repeat the step. Then just bend the corners of the glasses and trim them down. I decided to fold the wire so it embedded on either side of the head, but misjudged it and ended up ruining it. So here is head number two, completely remade, with the glasses just tight enough to hold onto the head. Cut out a little bow tie shape from a darker blue and stick this to the neck, adding small crease lines and a ball to the centre to finish it off. Ears are little teardrops with one side cut flat. Don't do this on your finger, I was just too lazy to reset the camera down onto the mat. Add these to the side of the head with water and a couple of presses with the Dresden tool. Cut a rectangle of white paste and wrap it around the back of the head, securing it at the top. Cut off the excess flaps until they are level with the back of the ears. Place a fat pointed oval across the top of the head. Don't worry if there's a gap, the paste will push down to cover it as you rock it from the front to the back. Then add lines to the front and merge the hairline with the forehead. Tiny sausages of white in front of the ears make sideburns and they will also secure the glasses. Water down some black paint to make a grey wash and paint the hair. Depending on the filling in your cup, you may want to add a cone of white paste. As we are adding buttercream, the buttercream may soften or leach colours from the contents of your cup. This also adds stability when placing in the age on the wire and you use less buttercream. Here I have a piping bag filled with purple buttercream and the Wilton star tip marked 1M. Starting at the back, pipe buttercream to hide the skittles and up around the cone until you are left with what looks like frozen yoghurt. Trim down the wire and insert it through the top of the buttercream into your cone of paste. Lastly, finish the board with the name. I have used tappets, which I have a full tutorial on linked below. And we're done. I have never seen this series before and had to do a little research when designing it. Check out vlog number 39 coming soon to see how I did it. Even if you don't know the series, hopefully you found something useful, whether it was just the lettering or even the model. Thanks guys, see you next week.